Boss, look what God has done. It has been a wild, wild journey. Over the last couple of years, we have moved locations. We moved into a place that we were looking to just buy and jump on and move forward and see what God would do. And then pandemic hit, shelter in place and the world changed. But even through all of that, the tragedy, the pain, the trauma, the Lord has been so faithful to us and you all have been faithful givers. You have been faithful tithers. You've been faithful in serving. And it has allowed us to transform what was once an open, empty space to a place that even our kids can begin to have begun to use basketball courts that we've had NBA players practicing on and our sanctuary, which ain't quite done, but is moving in that direction. But now we're in a turning point in which we need to move forward. And so with that, you guys, we're gonna begin a new campaign called the Impact Campaign. This campaign will be to move us further into the next stage of ministry. It would be to put us in a place where we own this property so that it can be what God has called us to be, but also allow us to free up much needed uh, resources to expand ministry and do greater work within the earth. Be prayerful about this season as you begin to hear more information about this campaign, about how you can be a blessing, how God is calling you to sacrifice over and above your normal to see what God will do. I promise you God's gonna bless you just as God's gonna bless this church. I love you so much. Look for more information soon. Peace. Well, good morning, church. Are you ready to worship? Because I am. Come on, bring everybody into the room and sing this with me. We love to call your name in time.
right where you are, if you're excited, there is no other name under heaven where given under men whereby we must be saved. Bless the Lord. How many of you know that we serve a great God? Yeah. Here we go. Let's bless the Lord. Water turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you, yeah. Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you There's none like you
church, the whole body says, amen. God bless you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. seconds talk to the Lord. ascend into the heel of the Lord but the one that have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up their soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully before idols they shall see the glory of the Lord and Lord this is the generation of us that seek you that seek your face we need you oh God like never before Somebody standing in here is on their last leg. Somebody standing in here is struggling. Somebody standing in here secretly wrestles with depression. God, we, we need you, God. And we thank you, God, that greater are you on the inside of us than he that is in the world. We, we thank you that that authority is not in our power, it's not in our might. For it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by your spirit, saith the Lord. And we thank you that we have authority in the name of Jesus. Thank you that we are no longer bastards. We are no longer set aside. We are no longer castaways. But you have drawn us close. You have loved us so much that you shed your blood on Calvary's cross while we were yet sinners. You, you died for us, Jesus, while we were yet alcoholics. You died for us while we were yet drug addicts. You died for us while we were yet in places we had no business being. You died for us when we were about to lose our mind. You died for us when we turned our backs on you. And for that, we say, thank you, God. We glorify you and we bless you. We, we know that you are our only help. There is no other help that we know. And so we stretch our hands to you, oh God. We lift up our voices unto you, oh God. We, we cry on behalf of those that are not here. We cry on behalf of a world that is dying. We cry on behalf of a city and a state that is losing its mind. We cry on behalf of a nation, God. And we cry out, Father, if there are but two, that you would spare the city. If there are but two, that you would spare the county. If there are but two, you would spare the nation. For we know you are faithful. You are a loving God. You are a righteous God. You are a kind God. You are a merciful God. You are a gracious God. 
God. God, we thank you that it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. And you told us in the time of trouble, we can come boldly to your throne of grace and obtain mercy. And so, God, right now, we open our mouths, we stretch our hands as sons and daughters with the rights and the privileges afforded to us, God. We thank you we don't have to go through the priest anymore, but the veil has been torn in two. The veil has been torn in two, and you called us to come closer. You called us to come closer. You called us to come closer. And God, we pray now in the name of Jesus, the majestic, mighty name of Jesus, the name in which every knee bows and every tongue confesses. We decree and declare right now that every work of the enemy is quenched. Every work of the enemy is quenched. Every fiery dark is rebuked. In the name of Jesus, we come together touching the green as a church that every warfare tactic is bound in the heavenlies. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we call down demonic altars. We call down every place that the enemy has laid our name and we shut his mouth right now in the name of Jesus. We command the warring angels of God to be released in the name of Jesus. The healing angels of God to be released in the name of Jesus. Power flow. Bible says, listen, listen for a second, and we're gonna we gonna move. Just listen, listen, listen. Hear this. Open your ears. Open your spirit. Esther chapter four. You don't have to turn to it. Just listen. Esther chapter four, verse eleven. It says, "All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know." That any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called has but one law, that the king put them to death, except the one whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that that person may live. Yet I myself, Esther, have not been called into the king's court 30 days. So they told Mordecai Esther's words. Mordecai told them to answer Esther as such. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from somewhere else. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Everybody hear this? Listen real carefully. It is no mistake that you are where you are when you are. If you pause for a second and look back over life, how many times have we made choices that should have killed us? How many times have you wanted to take your own life? How many times have you tried? How many times did you drink yourself into a stupor? How many times did you use so much just trying to forget? We've been locked up. We've been homeless. We've been depressed. We've been beaten down. So why are you still here? If the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and the devil has been trying to do that to you since you were born, why has he not succeeded? Could it be 
you have been called into the kingdom for such a time as this. How did you end up in this church today? How did you end up in that seat today? Could it be you were called into the kingdom for such a time as this? Everybody, real quick, everyone that is dealing with depression, stand or raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. I'm just going to pray for you. Stand, stand, stand. Do me stand. Those of you that are standing for depression, stretch your hands. Close your eyes. Stretch your hands. Those of you that are standing, you say you're struggling, you're wrestling with depression. Hear this as your eyes are closed. Let me tell you this first. Number one, you're a child of God. You have authority. You have authority. Depression is not simply a psychological, chemical issue. It is partly that, but it's also partly spiritual. So right now, the Holy Spirit would have us to pray for those of you that are wrestling with it. Stretch your hands, stretch your hands if you can't stand. Those of you that are sitting near somebody who is standing or their hands stretch, if you would just touch their chair maybe. or Ladies, if it's a lady, you can touch her shoulder. Brothers, if it's a brother. Those of you that have overcome depression especially. We're going to pray for them, and then we're going to. Sarah, can you get my sister in the white shirt? Right here, to your left. No, no, no. White shirt back. Back. All right, I'm going to pray for everyone. What's what? Ask what's her name? Yes. Maya, Tamea, Samea, Tamea, Tanea with an N. Tanea, come here. Yeah, bring up, bring up here. Y'all don't want to just stay, stay in attitude of worship. Those of you that are struggling with depression, we about to pray. You can stand right there, sister. You good. Today, the Lord says, he stopped us for you. Uh, hold on, listen. In these moments, you guys, I need you to just intercede and pray. Not necessarily clap, just intercede and pray. Lord says he's going to deliver others that are struggling but he says he's seen you he says the things you've wrestled with in the last three months there's about to be a breaking in your life The Lord says he's sending ministering angels to cover you. Windows are opening. Doors are opening. He says he's about to restore your laugh and your joy. And healing is coming. Everybody, depression, stretch your hands. We're about to pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you said we're two or three are gathered together in your name, that you will be in the midst. 
Your word declares that you came that we would have life and life more abundantly. So now, God, in Jesus' name, we thank you that your word never fails. That what you declare for it to do, it does not return void. But it accomplishes what you send for it to do. Lord, I thank you for these that stand, that stretch their hands to be able to say publicly in front of others, hey, I'm struggling with this this darkness. I'm struggling with these feelings. I'm struggling with feeling alone and isolated. I'm struggling with not wanting to get out the bed. I'm struggling with just being different and feeling off. God, I thank you for the humility to be able to say that. Father, I thank you that you lift up and exalt the humble. I pray now, Father, in Jesus' name, every spirit of depression every spirit of sorrow every demonic spirit of regret and rejection we call you out now in Jesus name we call out every spirit of abuse and everything that is tied to this depression. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, this week open doors for people, for them to talk to. Father, thank you this week in the name of Jesus, you're about to turn some situations around. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare their mind begins to be regulated. We command neurons and them to go back into the places they're supposed to be for things to flow like they're supposed to flow. God, in the name of Jesus, reconnect nerves where they need to be reconnected. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for healing in their bodies. We decree and declare as a body of believers, God, that you have the power to do exceeding and abundantly above all that they ask or think. God, now in Jesus' name, turn their mourning into dancing. Father, in the name of Jesus, by this time, time next week we will test you oh God by this time next week we thank you for lights at the end of the tunnel and this time next week we thank you for exiting some tunnels by this time next week we thank you for a shift in situations that will give joy back to them father in the name of Jesus everything that's been burdening them everything that's been plaguing them we command it in Jesus name off of their shoulders we command command every leech and every serpent off. That's right, girl. Take it off. We command it off of their shoulders. We bind Leviathan in the name of Jesus. We come against every python spirit that is choking the life out of them off their shoulders right now in the name of Jesus. Peace in their sleep. Rabasso. every demonic curse is cancelled in the name of Jesus that's right it's coming out 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 come out let her go Rabasa let her go Rabasa Koroba Sandi de Dorboso let her go Rabasa let him go Rabasa de Roboso let her go Rabakanda Roboso Rabese de Korabasa come on y'all pray with me pray with me pray with me a few more minutes come on let it go let her go let their kids go Rabasa Kanda Roboso da Raba let their kids go Shoraba da Raba Sorabaka we come against every demonic spirit that is coming against children Shoraba da Raba Sa what happened to you ain't gonna happen to your daughter what happened to you won't happen to your son out out come on I don't care what they said you're not being evicted this week I don't care what they said you're not losing your job this week come on church come on church give me a prayer church in the name of Jesus brother you shall be free you will not be like your daddy you will not walk out on your family you will not be homeless you will not be a drug addict healing is the children's bread deliverance is the children's bread out everything that's not God out 
Rabakanda Roboso. Come on, church. Come on. Prayer warriors. Come on. Rabakanda Roboso. Rabasa. Every religious spirit out. Rabasanda Roboso. Every religious spirit out. Rabakanda Roboso. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Generational curses are breaking. Rabasanda Roboso. Generational curses are breaking. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Rabakoso Robosanda Rabasa. Release your fire in here, God. Holy Spirit, come. Rabasada Roboso. Holy Spirit, come. Rabasada Roboso. Holy Spirit, come. Rabasada Roboso. y'all that's praying can keep praying um, everybody listen 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 because I'm about to ask all of you to pray with me last Sunday everybody look this way look this way Last Sunday, last Sunday night, uh, Angela Archie, our general construction worker, leader, contractor, I just call her general, uh, Angela oversaw the building and the renovation of everything you see in this building. Uh, she and her uh, parents are very faithful members, Hanju and Lee Archie. Uh, are her family and extremely faithful, her sister as well. Been part of this church for a long time. Angela, last Sunday, went out to investigate a smell of gas and her uh, propane tank blew up on her. It uh, threw her back uh, several feet and uh, she found that her legs were on fire. So she has been in the hospital since last Sunday with third degree burns on uh, both legs. And the doctors have basically said that if it doesn't heal on their own in the next three weeks, they'll have to do surgery. And if they do surgery, then she's in the hospital another two or three weeks. Uh, Angela's income is attached to her ability to work physically. So any amount of time that she's in that hospital, she is losing income. And those of you that have never been in the hospital, be grateful. But those of us that have been in hospitals before, you know after a while, it starts to mess with you. So the doctor said three weeks it needs to heal. If it doesn't heal, in the next two weeks they'll have to do surgery. And then she'll be there longer. So, how many of y'all crazy enough to ask God to heal her in a week. Who wanna who who wanna stretch their faith with me? Everybody that wanna do it, stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Matter of fact, let me stand too. No, no, I don't need them. One week. One week. They needed to heal in two weeks. We're asking God seven days. Everybody, 
that's crazy enough to believe it with me. Stretch your hands, open your mouth, and begin to declare. Begin to declare her healing. Come on, open your mouth. In Jesus' name, God, we believe for Angela's healing. We pray for her legs right now. Seven days, God. Rapid healing, seven days. Let the doctors be baffled, seven days. Come on, open your mouth. We command every demonic spirit of infirmity off of her legs right now in the name of Jesus. Not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, oh God. In Jesus' name, we speak to her limbs. We speak to skin cells and white blood cells. We command them to move in the name of Jesus. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Quickly, suddenly, now. Quickly, suddenly, now. Quickly, suddenly, now. Even right now, God, in Jesus' name, let her feel her limbs begin to get power. Let her begin to see skin growing back. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what you're about to do. Seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days. We count it done in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, give God a shout of praise. Come on, glory! Yes. Yes. Glory! Yes. Don't worry. I'm not about to preach. So we don't still have an hour to go. Y'all, let's thank God for our praise team. Crystal then pulled Pastor Margo out of retirement. You see the stuff that says impact all over the building. Um... I want to share some stuff with you guys on today, and uh, it won't it won't be long. Um, the Holy Spirit knows how to work stuff out, cause uh, He does what He does. Those of you visiting with us, let me say this, and those of you that are here, you ain't been here in a while. Let me say this really, 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 really quickly. We we are not a Baptist church. We are not a Pentecostal church. We're not an apostolic church. we just the church. And some Sundays, God flows in a very charismatic, free-flowing, powerful way. Some Sundays, we are very uh, evangelical in our presentation and demonstration. Some Sundays, we might be Baptist, uh, but we are just the church. And so, well, no, we ain't never really Baptist. I don't know about Baptist. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are just the church and so uh, just so you know that just so you're aware some Sundays is chill some Sundays is like this um, and we pause and we take these moments as the Holy Spirit leads us uh, because we believe that that is the reason we come together to encounter God and so it doesn't make sense for us to put our agenda and schedule above the Lord's when that's who we came for um, and so that's why we take those moments. That's why we take that time. If you're wondering, like, what in the world just happened? Uh, that's what happened. Holy Spirit led us, and we just, we, we go with what he says. And so uh, when he releases us from those moments, we are released, and we move further, and that is what happened. So uh, with all that said, we are presenting some stuff to you guys on today. 
because we find ourselves in a very interesting place. A few weeks ago, we preached and talked about doors. And one of the things Paul said is he said that there was a effectual door for ministry available to him, and there were many adversaries. We find ourselves in a similar place that there is a door before us that will give us the opportunities to do ministry on a large scale. Those of you that are new, you've not been around a while, uh, the vision of this church is to be one in which we create, cause, impact any place that we are. And not just spiritual impact, but also natural. A church, you all should not be able to disappear from an area and not be missed. Uh, If we were to move next week, there should be a void in this community. Uh, Any church that can leave a place and no one misses it was not a church. Uh, We find ourselves in in an interesting predicament where what we entered into an agreement in terms of uh, leasing this building to buy it, uh, we thought (laughs) before COVID that we would have bought it by now. The first month or two here, we saw 40, 50 people joining the church, walking the aisle, felt like we were well on our way. And then the world shut down. Uh, After the world shut down, nothing has been the same since. All y'all know that. You still feel it. Some of y'all still got masks on. Some still sit six feet apart. Uh, Some of us lost relatives and friends. The world is not the same. Uh, But part of that agreement cause is has in it an escalation of our rent payment okay so the rent has gone up it keeps going up and will keep going up until this is up the only option we have at this point is to buy this building those of you guys are new boss started back in the early 2000s started by bishop sherwood carthen and bishop was a giant but a gentle giant Uh, He was one who was firmly rooted in this community. He is one that served both community and police. Tremendous man of God. And then he passed suddenly. After his sudden passing, this church went years without a pastor. Uh, Those of y'all don't know how I ended up here. I was minding my own business in Chicago. (laughs) And uh, the Lord began to push me to plant churches. And I was working with the denomination that we are part of to begin to plant churches. And they said, hey, there's a church in Sacramento that still doesn't have a pastor. Would you be interested? And y'all know me by now. I'm laid back. I said, yeah, sure. If they they say, yeah, cool. If they say no, cool. Um, They called me, Sharon, who was our board chair at that time and part of the search team, called me like in 10 minutes (laughs) and said, hey, how you doing? I talked to her for 45 minutes, and I talked to somebody else for another hour, and that was in May of 2016. By November of 2016, I was pastor of the church. God moved. Thank you, you you 15 people. Uh, God moved suddenly, God moved quickly. I did not know what I was walking into there. I, you guys heard me say this a couple of times before. Uh, one, I thought Sacramento was L.A. So well, I'm flying over hay and hay bales and open gold fields. I'm like, I think the plane went the wrong way. Where we at? Uh, and then the other thing is, I didn't know, I didn't know the church I was getting. I, you know, I'm like, okay, a church without a pastor for years, it's going to be like 12 people in here. Uh, and the church was still, our church was still alive, still pretty much doing okay. Amen. Give yourself a hand. And we had about three, 300 or so people when I, when I got here that first November 2016. A year later, we had grown. We were averaging about 16, 1,700 people a Sunday. And I'm like, we on our way. We about to be on. It's about to be on and popping. Uh, 
And then we started digging in deeper and digging in deeper, and we just started people's, you know, some people's like, oh, he preached too long. Some people's like, oh, service too long. Some people's like, I don't want to do all that. I mean, it's just, it was a very, it's just a number of reasons. Some it was, oh, he's not like Bishop. And so you have these transitions, and always in transition, you're going to lose something. Let me say that again. You will always lose something in any transition. So keep that in mind while you're trying to hold on to stuff. It may be that you holding on to it is keeping you from transitioning. Uh, and so God just began to prune us and prune us and prune us and prune us. And I'm like, when are you going to stop pruning? God, this is, this is a lot of pruning. But, you guys, we are still here. Amen. Amen. Not only we still hear you all, but let me encourage you in this. I've had the opportunity to preach many churches across the country since the pandemic ended. And we've had several preachers and pastors that have come through since the pandemic ended. And we are still one of the largest in-person attending majority black churches in the country. Oh, y'all can do better than that. That's, a, that's, a, that's saying something. And so we find ourselves in this place where God has us as a congregation healthy. Financially, though, <laughs> we struck. You know how you feel good in your body? You, 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 you feel good, but you got 20 bills due next week and you only have like an inch of paycheck. Um, and so through all of that, you guys, we have, watch this, consistently served. Our church has been known for serving the community. Our church has always served the community. We, at one point, served all first responders. We fed the homeless. We sheltered the homeless. They stay, They used to stay in our building for a week. Uh, we would go out to detention centers. The bomb squad went out. We did angel tree. We did, you name it, we did it. We gave bikes away. We gave food away. We showed up in parks. So for two years, you guys didn't even notice, for two years, uh, Pastor Joe Talicon, who used to be with us, would go out out to the park on Easter when we would be in church here, he would be in the park on Easter baptizing anybody that wanted to be baptized. And so we have never ceased doing ministry. Now we find ourselves in a place where doing ministry has become a struggle because of the weight of what we pay each month. We pay, y'all ready? $38,000 a month. I know. That's why all this is missing. <laughs> one hair for each dollar each month. That's what I lose. One hair for each dollar each month. Versus, watch this, with a mortgage, we could pay anywhere between $18,000 and $24,000 a month. 24 is what we've paid the entire time I've been here. At the last place, when we first got here, we can thrive at 24. Now, end goal is zero. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. But we can thrive at 24. So it puts us in a place where now we have to navigate where we are. And I want to share some stuff with you guys on today. And Billy D, come on. Billy D's going to come and share first. Give her your attention, then I'm going to say some stuff in there. Thank you, Billy D. Hello. You guys hear me? Bear with me. I'm nervous. This is kind of last minute. I don't got nerve written down, so I'm speaking from my heart. Um, I am 20 years old. I um, came to Boss about two years ago. When I, before I came, I was at a church that I grew up with, and I found myself, um, I reached my peak in my spiritual growth. And so I wasn't growing spiritually there. We were just kind of going through the motions, and, you know, I wasn't learning about God and learning about who he is and what he can do and um, the authority we have. And so during that period, I ended up kind of, um, I didn't walk away from God, but I, was, I wasn't walking with him. <laughs> and so 
I was like, oh, child, this ain't it. I was like, I got to do something. <laughs> and so I was like, let me, because um, I didn't know how to seek God. So I was like, let me find somewhere where I can learn or find a church where um, it is led by the Spirit. And so um, I had came across Boss. I was like, this church is cool. I like this. <laughs> and so um, I kept going, and I, I, felt, I realized I was growing so much and so rapidly. And um, my prayer life began to grow. I began to read uh, my word more and um, just being able to, like, really build that connection with God, build a re true relationship with God, and being able to see um, individuals come together and worship together in spirit and in truth. And so I want to thank all of you guys for being able to do that and just um, because it really is inspiring. Uh, seeing how quick we are to pray for each other when we need help and um, to give advice and just being able to see that is truly, truly inspiring. So I thank all of you and I thank Pastor for um, being led, allowing him to be led and used as an instrument um, for, to benefit his king, um, the Lord's kingdom. So I really do thank you guys. Boss is so important to me. Um, yeah, it, it has been an amazing journey and I hope that we can continue to um, build and continue to stay here. I grew up in this neighborhood as well, and it, this neighborhood needs some help. <laughs> and it's gotten way worse over the years, but um, I truly do believe that um, God, Boss is called here and that we can do so many amazing things here. So, Talk. Do me a favor, write this down. Pens and paper, write this down real quick. The first thing is we exist so others can see. The church should exist so others can see. I'm sorry, brother, that's a nice hat, man. That is a nice hat. Uh, put it back on for a second. Let me see the hat. This hat is just nice. Woo, that's a nice hat, brother. Bless you, man. All right, those y'all visiting us, we just do stuff like that. We weird. We don't have no, we don't have no church protocols. Uh, first thing is, right, I'm sorry, Crystal, the apostolic and Crystal said, oh, Lord Jesus. Uh, first thing, write it down. We exist so others can see. We exist so others can see. Come on, who's next? Ricky. I always want to be like, Ricky! <laughs> My bad, man. You know, I just every time I see him, I was like, Ricky, why would you run straight down an alley and not zig? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm off. I'm off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The way I feel, I can run in down, run down any one of these aisles right now if you wanted me to. But right. So I get an interesting text message yesterday out of nowhere. Right. I'm sure one of, most of us have gotten that text message, like, not who this is, but why is this? Right? And first of all, I love Boss. Like the sister said before, Boss came at a very, very critical time in my life. I've been part of Boss now for 13 years. Yeah. Appreciate that, appreciate that. But it took nine of those years to figure out how to serve. And the cold part about it is that the blueprint was always there. I came to Boss because of the community aspect what it meant to the community and what the church and the people did for the community. You know, oftentimes in life, some of us, I'm gonna blame me, you know, we want that, we wanna be that guy, that person, the one that has the star, starlight and the shine. But for whatever reason, God told me some days, yesterday, this morning, five minutes ago, two minutes ago, that's, that's, that's not what you built for. Sometimes you built just to do the hard things in life. And I've had to learn to accept that in my life. But I understood that it was because God gave me the strength to do it. That it was my purpose. It became my purpose. And because sometimes a lot of people don't want to do the hard things, <laughs> God has a strange way of just knocking on my door all the time and just being like, say, bro, I need something, I need something for you to do. And oftentimes I run away because that's how I feel most of the time. But when I look back and I think about all that he has saved me from. Yeah. Yeah. 
I can never repay him for what he's done for me, my family. And I'm sure a lot of you out there are the same. But boss means life to me. I come here weekly. Most of you don't know. <laughs> and it's funny how it happened because when I was looking for God, he ultimately showed up and basically gave me the keys to his house. So when you guys aren't here, if they could show it on the cameras, I'd be up here wrestling and me and God be having it out, y'all. And it's more than just why. It'd be like, can I go? <laughs> I'm ready to go, Lord. No more, no more. But sometimes, uh, and I'll, I'll just leave this with you all. My great grandmother, I never met her, but she left something as a legacy to me and my family. And it's something that I've lived on and lived for moving forward. And I pray that I can pass down one day to my own. And her saying was simply, Lord, yes, Lord, others, let this my motto be. And boss, as I stand here before you, I am gratefully gracious to Bishop, to Pastor, to Margo, to Eli, Fab, my brothers, my sisters in the faith. And I just encourage you to figure out that whatever God is asking of you, that you learn to try and put your personals to the side just for a little bit, just for a moment to see that what God has for you is for you. Thank you, boss. Thank you, pastor. Thank you, church. Love you. Next one, write this down. God has given us the blueprint for life. The blueprint for life. A few years ago, when we were on 44th Street, we found ourselves in a similar position in that we had been a transitory church. We had been a church that had moved a lot. Um, when Bishop was alive, boss moved around. When Bishop passed, the church kind of settled on 44th, but that was not an option to purchase it. And so we were still, for the most part, uh, in tents. Uh, you know the Old Testament. You know what I'm talking about. And so we wanted to move into a place where we could own, and we needed to find a place big enough, park and all that great stuff, but still in South Sacramento because this is where we're called to. And so we started then uh, what, is, what was called the Blueprint Campaign. Some of y'all that were there, you remember when I was building stuff in front of the church like a crazy person, doors and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and that Blueprint Campaign, you guys, it raised on our own, no help. We didn't hire a company. We did it completely on our own with church announcements. We raised almost four hundred dollars to $500,000 in that campaign. Come on, give yourselves a hand for that. It got us into this building. It got us in this space. It renovated this space up into the point that you see. Uh, it only was ceased and stopped by a global pandemic. Uh, and so Blueprint brought us thus far. So we now have to sit and figure out, well, how do we move forward and what are we called to do and what does that look like? And that's where we are today. We're grateful for the Blueprint campaign. Those of you that have been given to it, still give to it. That campaign will conclude as of today. Um, and it will begin to transition into our next. And so we're excited about what God is going to do. Come on, Renee. Y'all put your hands together for Renee. Renee. She has my tissue because I'm a crier, but I'm going to try to hold it together. I'm going to be a big girl. My granddaughter. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Come stand next to her. <laughs> I don't You got that funeral voice like you're going to go long. Stand here <laughs> right next to her. <laughs> no, he's right. So when I know. Mar I love you, too. That's why she's standing right there. Go ahead. <laughs> no, when Margot texted me, my first response was, uh-uh, <laughs> in my head. But where I am right now, and I'll, I'll end with that, but... The Holy Spirit just told me, oh, yes, you will. And, and it's, it shocked her because I responded yes without the no first. And so 
of course, I'm the kind of person that just starts analyzing. Now I got to do overkill because I'm extremely analytical. And I begin to write everything down. I went back over the years. I've been here for four years, so I'm kind of a newbie, but I'm not. And I just looked at what God had done in these past four years. And I began to write everything down. And then I was looking at scripture. And then I said, Pastor, I ain't going to have to preach because I'm going <laughs> to preach today. But I'm not going to stay long because I told her two minutes. But I'll tell you what he's done for my life since I've been here. Um, I had moved away. I, I, I came here in 1961 with my family. But in the last eight years, I moved away in 2014. And it was for a purpose. And I always watch what God is doing. And it was a purpose because he set me apart. He took me away from my family. He took me away from everybody. And there was nobody in Florida but me. No other family. And I mean, when I say I got 5,000 people <laughs> that I'm related to, nobody was in Florida. But when the time came, he brought me back. And I'm not one to really search. Go. I don't church hop. My daddy was a preacher. I'm, so I didn't church hop. The Holy Spirit brought me here. And so I'll tell you my first impression. Oh, man, he's too young. <laughs> Off the top. And so I sat and I listened. <laughs> I listened for about four months. But then as he mentioned everything that I, I know to participate, okay, because you can't get yours if you don't put something in. You cannot. And I come here because I like to sit in the front because I don't like to know what's going on behind me. People say, did you say, nope. I came here to get mine. And, and that's what boss means to me is because I, this is my filling station. Pandemic was rough on me, but I was sitting at my table every Sunday or whatever and doing praise till I found out that that wasn't even live. And I was upset. <laughs> I started doing You ain't supposed I to tell to. that. You told me. Somebody I told, told you me. To oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but any anyway, I finally committed after a few months. And it was like, okay, what's my purse? But, but I, I took food to the homeless. I, we had a let the homeless come and stay in here in January. I said, oh, that's impressive because I'm a doer, and, but I'm not a visionary. And then one time he said, you guys do this and let's set it up in 30 places. And I said, he has lost his mind. <laughs> but he's a visionary and I like that because it gives me something to do. So I had retired when I came back here and so I realized I'm going to be bored to death. I am and I've got to do something. Well, there's so many stories that I can tell you that this church, this body, and I'm going to tell you why I'm really here, is because I can look at this audience and see how many people that I have met and how many people, whether you know it or not, have poured into my life just saying hello, just saying, hey, girl, hey, let's do lunch sometime, or whatever I had to connect with you with, you're pouring into my life, and I knew I had to give back, and so I participated in just about everything and I said I gotta find my niche and so I call him up and I tell him okay this is wh who I am and whatever he said don't nobody care about that and I said <laughs> those were his words and it but it freed me it freed me you have no idea because my upbringing was rigid and so with that said I just begin to see the liberties and the freedoms and the people because I could, my brother has a church up street. I could be with family, but it's comfortable. And I'm not that comfortable kind of girl. You got I need that iron to sharpen iron. And I need to I need to grow and I need to hear other ideas and other things besides, okay, we can go to church, girl, how you doing? Whatever, new grandbaby, Patnam. And I it just wasn't enough for me. So I did. I came here and I stayed. And I'm on the prayer team. I lead the life events. I'm helping in the finance department. I'm here twice a week. And I just looked at how God has poured into my life here. And so just like a 401k, just like a 401k, I have one. I invested in it. And all I can say, and I didn't even know this was really kind of the idea, but I can tell you this, invest in it because it, ha it gives dividends. It's going to give back to you. God bless you. She said two minutes. 
two minutes. She, she came close. All right, write this down. We are, we are the place of Pilates. Stretching. I was trying to be California fancy, and y'all were like, what? Stretching. We stretch. God stretches us here. <laughs> Forgive me, Jesus. You ever have a joke in your head that's hilarious that you want to share? And you, I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to share it. We are the place of stretching. Uh, Fab, come on. Good morning, boss. Lou Rawls. <laughs> so, Pastor Daryl talked about some, some things earlier, and it so resonated with what I, has, I have to say today. Um, I gave a title to what I want to share today, and uh, it is titled, I am where I'm supposed to be. I am where God wants me to be. And so for, for you guys to understand that, I have to um, provide a little background. Um, I was born and raised in Paris, France, in the suburb of Paris, France. And, um, you know, you hear Paris, you think uh, it's the most beautiful city in the world. Part of it is true, but where I grew up is in the suburb. In the suburb, there's nothing pretty about it. It's literally the hood, um, okay? So um, that's where I was born and raised. Um, and I was raised by a single mother, a single mother from Africa. Well, she's 100% African uh, from Togo, which is in West Africa. Uh, both of my parents are, both of my parents are, are Togolese. So I was born and raised in France, but the, the African way, the, the Togo, Togolese way. Um, from there, um, where I grew up. N um, nothing pretty about where I grew up. And so God used sports to keep me out of trouble. And um, started to grow tall and stuff like that and got into basketball and starting to travel the world and things of that nature. And um, eventually it led me here to the state. Um, I moved a lot. I, w I went to different schools in Colorado, in Texas, in, in Florida. And I graduated from um, the uh, an, and the number one aeronautical school in, in, in the country, in Florida. And um, my mom came to my graduation. And um, um, my mom was a very, very strong woman. Um, my family, everybody was afraid of her. They, 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 um, um, they called her the, the, the woman of steel. And um, uh, well, she came to my graduation, and that was the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful gifts I could have given her, because she was very, very tough on me, and I didn't understand that when I was younger. Long story short, um, uh, a few months after my graduation in 2006, she passed away, and that was unexpected. So left everything that I had here in, this, you know, in Florida at the time, and went back to France, and it was just my sister and I. So she was our rock. We didn't know what to do, and... And that's when I thought that I was going to do my thing and just let everybody have it. But God spoke and revealed himself. And one thing that I, that, that I forgot to mention, I, I, I was raised Catholic. And, um, but, but when my mom passed, God spoke clearly. And he said, no, nah, you're not about to do what you thought you were going to do. So some way, somehow, came back in the States, um, uh, got married. And moved to Southern California, where God started to uh, do some things there. And uh, eventually, my ex-wife got a job in Sacramento in Orangeville. Um, and uh, I didn't want to move to Sacramento because, like, what's in Sacramento? I, I'm from the city. Um, um, I've always been, you know, in big cities: Chicago, New York. I mean, you name it. And I'm like, Sacramento? Come on, man. Um, um, so, so and, and, and true story, the first day that I got to Sacramento, um, I went to the, the, the farmer's market in, um, in um, Roseville. What's it called again? Denios. And the first thing first I saw there was a T-shirt saying, NorCal ruined my life. If, and I wish I had a smartphone back then because I would have taken a picture of that. Um, and so when, when I moved there, it was like, 
2007, so that was like right before the, um, uh, the downturn with the, the housing and all that stuff. So um, with the background that I had, like you graduated from school, had a great job in, so in Southern California, but I come up here and nothing, nothing works out. <laughs> um, but, but God was at work, God was at work. Um, and then fast forward seven years later, in 2014, uh, I go through a divorce. So at the time I was living in the northern part of Sacramento and um, I moved to the south. So once again, I had to relocate and reestablish myself and I have two daughters. So it was time for me to find a new church and um, I, 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 got, I was given like three churches like after doing some research and Boss was one of them. Attending Boss at the time, there was two services. On a, uh, I went there on a Saturday afternoon and uh, something um, something happened there. I'm not going to get into the details, but something happened there, and I was like, whoa, uh, uh, this is where I want to be. Um, and then I came back with my girls, and the way they were uh, received, um, it was much needed because uh, I was going through it, I had just gone through a divorce. Um, so shout out to Miss Yvette at the time who was running the, um, the children ministry, and Miss uh, Jean, who's, a, you know, She's over there busy. But anyways, um, so thank you, thank you, because I couldn't have done it without you. And ever since, so oh, what's interesting about that time, it was like 2014, and I didn't understand what was going on. I, it, it didn't matter, because I was just seeking God. I just wanted to be with him. And so um, at that time, Pastor Sharwood had already passed away. So to me, the people that were there, they were really there for the Lord. And... Um, um, Wrap it up, yeah. uh, um, so, um, um, and, 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 and I, think, I think it had been like a couple of years after the fact, you know, we were, there was that team that was searching for a, pa a senior pastor. And, um, and so for me, from my, 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 my perspective, from, from, I got to see this guy showing up and um, it, it, it's, it's, it's definitely, he's definitely sent by God. And from there, you know, God started to use me. And um, I thought that all the things that I've been exposed to in my life, uh, ever since I've been in the States, that I was going to take it back in my neighborhood because my neighborhood resembles a lot like South Sacramento. Um, so I, the, my thought was that, yeah, one day I'm going to go back. But he revealed to me that this is where I'm supposed to be and this is where I'm supposed to give back. And so um, there's, you know, it doesn't matter what goes on um, in this church, in terms of like whether people are nice or not, whether the name is bossy, none of that stuff matters, because I'm supposed I'm he, where I'm supposed to be. So it's that simple. And then Mike, brother Mike, come on, we're gonna go straight through. All right, so I received the same cryptic text that everybody else <laughs> got. And honestly, this is the first time, and, and Pastor Marco could probably tell you, it's the first time that I said yes without no qualifications. Normally I'm like, because <laughs> normally I'm like, hey, you know what, I need 24 hours to think about it. Um, what's the time, what's the duration, what's the location? Like, I need everything. Because I'm looking for a way to be like, nope, can't do that one thing. That one thing, oh, you said I need to have gray shoes on? Nope, can't do it. Crocs, can't do it, mm -mm. So, <laughs> so this time I said, yes, I can help. I was thinking though, I know she's seen the three dots, because the three dots came up, I said, deleted that. I deleted that one too. And then I said, yes, I can help. So I still don't know what's about to say, so I apologize ahead of time. Um, but Pastor Margo asked me to talk about what boss means to me. And for me, it means, it means problems, honestly. Situations, issues. Like we've heard the people that came before me talk about moving from place to place, losing a pastor, 
Um, you know, if you've been here in the congregation, you've seen people in the congregation become widows and widowers. And we've seen people get hurt and we've seen situations in the lobby. We've seen situations right here. And it doesn't look any different than outside. Honestly, let's just be real about it. So when I see when, when bo what, bo what boss means to me, it's problems. But those problems, it also boss means to me is biblical. Because when you see stories in the Bible, we see suffrage. One of my favorite stories is about Jacob when he was wrestling with God, tussling with him, not wanting to let him go. And then God was like, let me show you the real power real quick. Bloop. Popped him on the hip. Now, now he out here changed forever. But he was loving it because he was like, I'm not letting you go without a blessing. So when I say problems, I think of Hebrews 12, 11. And let me, let me not act like this just popped up off the top of my head because it didn't. It's literally my Twitter bio profile thing because I love it so much. But just to summarize it, it talks about that anytime you're going through discipline, it doesn't feel good. But at the end, there's a harvest of righteousness. So we're in a part that doesn't feel good. That it's continual though. We're constantly in the part that doesn't feel good until it feels good. And then when it feels good, what happens to us though? Let's be real, what happens to us? We get prideful. It gets a little bit harder to get on our knees. Hold on, man. Like, we start doing qualifications. Yes, but maybe, um, wait, Pastor Margo, uh, uh, we start doing that. We got to be content, consistent in all the times because all the times God is with you, right? Unless you're forgetting about him, let's be real, unless you're forgetting about him when you're in the good times. You have to sit for a second, pause. When you don't have a sore throat, pray and say thank you. Because the only reason why you know your throat is not sore is because you had one. You only know the good because you had the bad. So when I say boss means problems to me, it's because I understand what good is. And I know we're getting there. And I'm content here in the problems. Anybody that knows how muscles work, I was just talking to Xavier on the way out, one of the kids from the youth. Anybody that knows how muscles work understand that you have to break them. You're not just lifting weights, you're tearing. You're tearing muscles. You go to sleep and then it heals and it becomes bigger and stronger. Matter of fact, I should have did a couple pushes before I came up here today. A missed opportunity. Okay, okay. So, anyways, what it means to me is that I know Miss Renee was saying she got family down the street, but you got family here. I have family here. So, what it means to me is that I'm here with my family. We grow and we getting stronger, and then we get to that next phase. Thank you. So, if you haven't figured it out, Mike teaches our Bible study. He, um, he, he, you know, he lifts weights too. <laughs> uh, boss, you all, is the place where puzzle pieces find their problems. One of the things that is unique about us is that many of you, if you're honest, when you came to boss, you found a problem or your problem found you. One of the greatest gifts God can give us is to give us our problem because your purpose and his glory is on the other side of it. This is our problem. So as we, as a church, stare our problem in the face, we know our God is greater. 
I believe boss wholeheartedly. There are so many more of you that can share so many stories of how God has used this church to bless you. We cannot hoard testimonies. There's a whole community around us that if we be the church we're supposed to be, we'll see thousands of people who will be able to stand in front of this church on the street corner in Walmart and say, God used his church called Boss to change my life. To do that, we need to anchor here. And here we have to anchor in South Sacramento, but we believe God has called us to this place. And he's done that to make an impact. Because of that, we're going to begin a new thing in our lives, another campaign. This campaign, you guys, they are passing out now information for it. What it is really briefly, look this way, look this way. They'll hand it to you. We have submitted an offer to the owner of this property, very creative one, to purchase it. We are praying for him. His name is Ethan Conrad. Y'all want to pray for him? You can pray for him. We are waiting for his response. Our denomination, the covenant denomination, is, has agreed at this point to give us the loan we need to buy the property. Amen. However, we have a part to play. In the next 90 days, or 90 days, when is December? That's three months, roughly, yeah. As a church, hear this. Everybody look this way. Listen carefully. In the next 90 or so days, by December, we need to raise... $250,000 cash. Easy money. Easy money. Now here, listen to, listen to this. Campaigns, you guys, I know some of you have trauma stories about church campaigns. That little red thermometer that don't never move on the wall. It's been stuck. It's, if you go back to that church right now, your home church, that thermometer is still in the same place. I know y'all got traumas. <laughs> I know you got fears, but one of the things I want you to understand is that we believe in accountability. We believe in uh, transparency um, as much as legally possible and wise. And so as we dig into this, I know many of you have questions and you're like, well, what about this? And what do we do with this? And what do we do with that? We will have an annual meeting that we missed the last couple of years because of COVID that will restart. Uh, until then, Lynn, can you stand, Lynn? Actually, Lynn, can you come up here? Quickly, I know, my bad, I'm sorry. I... You clapping, they don't know who she is yet. <laughs> Lynn, you all, is the chair of our board. So the way our church is structured, um, I, am, I am not the, the king Right. We we have a little parliament kind of thing going on. And so our board uh, makes large decisions with me, but they all they also bounce back and forth. All right. So I'm their accountability. They're my accountability. Right. So don't nobody go crazy. Lynn is the chair of our board. Now, amen. Her and several others who are a part of the board, which we will introduce to you guys over the next few weeks, have never participated in a church board before. And churches are whole of the monsters compared to the regular world. And she stepped in in a time of a lot of transition and a lot of things going on with her workload being insane. And she stepped in to serve. And so can you give her a hand for serving? For free. <laughs> so I dragged her up here to make her red in the face so that you all could see her. And so if you have any questions about finances and all that stuff, how we spent money, what the budget is, blah, 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 ask Lynn. All right. 
Lynn will be able to set up. Listen, she ain't going to answer you right then. She can set up an appointment with you and sit down with you, her and Hanju and some others, and walk you through where money's been spent and why. Okay? Uh, thank you, Lynn. We need to raise $250,000 cash by December. Now watch this. And we need to get to 800000 in two years. Okay? What this money is for, the $250,000 will, should the owner say yes, we believe he will. The denomination says what they're going to do, we believe they will. That is the portion we have to pay as our down payment to buy the building, all right? The money, the other 600000 over the next uh, two years, all right, that fulfills our obligation on part of that loan. Watch this. And the other part is it allows us to complete this facility. We will have doors. The kids will have ceilings and lights, and they'll have doors, and we can finish the court. We can finish these bathrooms that need to be finished because y'all keep using the kids' bathroom, and you ain't supposed to use the kids' bathroom while the kids are in the building, so stop going in there. Just hold it or go in the living room bathroom. Uh, so we, have finished, we get to finish the bathrooms. Uh, none of the staff have offices. We are all operating with no ceiling and no doors as well. It allows us to finish. Now, let me explain to you guys the impact of completing the building, owning the building. Purchasing this building frees up enough resources that we can go back to doing the large-scale ministry we're used to. We can hire critical people who will help this church continue to grow and to thrive. Some of y'all, all y'all been like, communication, pastor, communication, we don't know this. We don't know We need to get some more people. That allows us to do that. It allows us to fix many holes. It allows us to strengthen our youth and children and young adult ministry. It allows us to go back to being the church. That's one. The other thing is, from a natural financial perspective, completing the building allows us to then gain, generate income. We've had so many requests to rent the gym, to rent the studio, to use different places in the building for different events, to use the living room that y'all hang out in, to have part, but we can't rent anything out until we own it. When we own it, it generates income. I, I said to you guys before that doing this, this church, we will never have to worry about money again. It's going to be something, but it ain't going to be money. And so those of you all that call sometimes and say, Pastor, I really need help with rent. I need help with this. Um, we will have it then. Right now, everything that you see us do, it is a few people scraping together, donating and doing things to make those things happen. So this campaign, you guys, $250,000 by December, $800,000 or so by two years from now allows us to acquire this property and finish this property and get back into moving into ministry. It also means we don't have to be transitory again. We have a place, we have a home where we are settled. This can only be done together. Everybody say together. Yeah. Campaigns, you guys, are above your regular tithes and offerings. So it is very much sacrificial. But this is not, hear me, you guys, and we're about to wrap up. This is not a fundraiser. No chicken dinners. Nobody cooking in the basement. We don't have no basement, but ain't nobody cooking. None. Uh, the kids will have stuff that you can acquire from the kids, but for the most part, we will have to do this through tithes, offerings, and our sacrifice. And scripture talks about giving, and it's not about equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice. We have to each ask the question, God, what do you require of me to do this? I shared with you guys last week um, that one of our members donated uh, burial plots to us for us to uh, trade in or sell as his way of giving. And so it is not simply just, oh, I don't have $20. We all have something I'm sacrificing. Uh, I'm going to sacrifice more. Pastor Margo is, the staff is. All of our leaders, we've had these conversations a couple of weeks now, and we're all going to have to sacrifice from top to bottom, side to side. 
because we cannot do this if we do it separated. And I wanted you all to hear how God has been moving in this church and what I fully believe God's going to do on a multiplied scale when we do this. Boss, this is our problem, and we are grateful for it because I am fully persuaded that God will bring us through this as he's brought us through so much more. So I'm going to give you, uh, you have, a, you got the packets with you. We're going to prepare for our offering. If you would just pause for a second and pray over these packets right where you are. As individuals, just, just hold that packet in your hand and say a prayer. And be open to what the Lord will have you to give. We will talk more about it next week. Next week will be more normal Sunday. We'll be preaching and worship. Um, and we will hear what the Lord has to say in the next few weeks. Come on, everybody. Let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you. We glorify you. Thank you for the impact you are calling us to. Thank you for the impact that this church has already had in the neighborhood and in the lives of those that attend and are a part. We pray now, Father, in Jesus' name, for every gift we're about to give. We know you give seed to the sower. Father, we know in Jesus' name, this is going to be a stretch for a lot of us. Money's tight. The economy's going all kind of ways. But, Father, we know the world's economy is not your economy. And, God, you can bless in the middle of recessions. You can bless in the middle of downturns. You can bless. You can give houses, and the housing market has collapsed. You are God. And so we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in the finances of each and every person here that is a part of this church that isn't here and all that you're going to do through this campaign. We glorify you now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody look this way as you give your offering. This is Yvette. Say hi, Yvette. <laughs> Yvette has for the last nine months overseen and led our capital campaign team. Amen. So this time around, we're not doing it on our own. We actually hired a company that specializes in campaigns for churches. And so they are helping us walk through this whole process, uh, follow up everything. And so we are trying it this way uh, to make sure we do things with excellence. And this was worthy of that investment. Um, but it requires someone in the church to lead the team. Um, and so Yvette has been doing that the last nine months faithfully and consistently. And so if y'all could give it up for her one more time. If you have any questions, uh, if you have any questions about the campaign, see Yvette. Any questions about finances and money, see Lynn. All right. Don't ask me neither one of them things. I don't know. <laughs> These two ladies are handling those areas. And so I just want to see Yvette. And she can direct you to whoever's on the team that can maybe answer your question the best. But if you have a question about the campaign, see her. All right. I know. Um, in your packet as well and online, you will find some save the dates. These are key dates that are coming up today, September 11th. And we did share with you guys the public launch. Uh, starting next Sunday, we will have a special sermon series for the next few weeks around um, how God wants to bless us, how God wants to bless us. Uh, and not only that, it is not simply, like I said, a fundraiser, but it's a spiritual journey. And so there will be scriptures and fasting and times of prayer throughout the week each day that will accompany this. We're not fundraising, all right? 
We are sacrificing for God's kingdom by sowing into his kingdom, and we will watch as God sows back into our lives, and he does what he's going to do. Uh, and then October 6th, all the leaders, we will come together to make our commitments. And then on Sunday, October 9th, we will all come together as a church, and we will give our commitments. Now, the commitment is simply this. You are going to go home and pray about what you can do pledge or give over the next two years all right so over the next two years you and your family sit down say okay what is God calling us to do and then that is what you pledge now one of the things too is critical you can bring on October 9th we're asking you those of you that are pledging those of you that can even those of you that may not do the actual campaign on October 9th when you're asking everybody to bring the biggest cash gift you can bring. Now, let me tell you why. One, that's the beginning of the campaign officially. That's the beginning of the two-year span in which we're going to be giving. But it has to be tallied. We have to know where we are so that we make sure we're on track to pay our part in December. So the, 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 the sooner we can bring our cash gifts, the sooner we know what we have. I'm asking you guys, please, this is why it's sacrificial. Don't cut your tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings help with the operations. So your tithe and your offering goes to operations that keeps the lights on, all that great stuff. This campaign only goes to the acquisition and the completion of this building, all right? Legally, that's all we can do with it. So if you write, camp, if you write impact campaign on it, we cannot use that money to pay smud. It has to go towards acquiring and completing this building. So... Balls. That's where we are. Look what God has done. It has been a wild, wild journey. Over the last couple of years, we have moved locations. We moved into a place that we were looking to just buy and jump on and move forward and see what God would do. And then pandemic hit, shelter in place, and the world changed. But even through all of that, the tragedy, the pain, the trauma, the Lord has been so faithful to us. And you all have been faithful givers. You have been faithful tithers. You've been faithful in serving, and it has allowed us to transform what was once an open, empty space to a place that even our kids can begin to have begun to use, basketball courts that we've had NBA players practicing on, and our sanctuary, which ain't quite done, but is moving in that direction. But now we're at a turning point in which we need to move forward. So with that, you guys, we're going to begin a new campaign called the Impact Campaign. This campaign will be to move us further into the next stage of ministry. It would be to put us in a place where we own this property so that it can be what God has called us to be, but also allow us to free up much needed uh, resources to expand ministry and do greater work within the earth. Be prayerful about this season as you begin to hear more information about this campaign, about how you can be a blessing, how God is calling you to sacrifice over and above your normal to see what God will do. I promise you God's gonna bless you just as God's gonna bless this church. I love you so much. Look for more information soon. Peace.